I'm Mike Brilla, host of the Inspired Teacher Podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Coming up on episode 211 of the House of EdTech podcast, I'm going to give you some Google Chrome features that you need to try. We've got the House of EdTech VIP, and we're going to talk about love. That's right. It's time for that long distance dedication. I'm Casey Kasem. Strike up the band. Welcome to the House of Ed Tech. My name is Chris Nessie. The House of Ed Tech launched in 2014, giving me the opportunity to speak with teachers, leaders, and creators so you can more effectively integrate technology, strengthen your pedagogy, and have more confidence in your classroom and school so you can make an impact. Get involved with the podcast by visiting my website, chrisnessy.com. Using technology isn't difficult, and this is where it begins. This is the House of Ed Tech. That's right. This is where it begins. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. If you're brand new, thank you for making this a part of your anytime, anywhere professional development for the very first time. I'm pretty sure at the end of this episode, you will click follow or subscribe, and I'll see you in episode 212. <laughs> okay. So as I said, we are going to talk about some cool Google Chrome features that I think are worth trying. You might have heard of these, but that's okay. They might be new to you. And that's what this is all about. I've got the VIPs and we're going to talk about love. And yeah, that was my bad Casey Kasem impression to start the show. But before we get into that, I want to give you another reminder, or maybe you're hearing this for the first time, episode 215 is coming soon. Why is that important? It's the last episode of this calendar year, 2022. And that means it's time for the 2022 House of EdTech Smackdown. It's going to come your way. It's my last episode of the calendar year. And I want to know what you have loved, what you have tried, what you have enjoyed. What is your big takeaway in the EdTech space for this year? I want you to send me a voicemail or an email, preferably a voicemail. And I want you to send it to me by Friday, December 9th, 2022, so I can assemble all of these great recommendations and SmackDown topics for you in the last episode of the year. Why do I tell you this at the end of October? Because it's this episode, and then there's only three more until episode 215. So some people send them to me early in the year, and some people wait until probably December 10th. I would prefer to have you send me your entry for the SmackDown by December 9th. And I'm looking forward to it. It is one of my favorite episodes to do on the show, and it's a regularly produced episode that I do every year, and that dates all the way back to the first year, back in 2014. So let's keep the tradition going. And as always, I challenge you to help me get more recommendations than ever before. If it's your first time, hey, you're more than welcome. Let's jump in. Let's do this. House of EdTech Smackdown 2022. Now, let's go to my EdTech recommendation. All right. So Google Chrome is something that many people use, unless you're the person who's still using Internet Explorer, which technically you shouldn't be able to do that anymore, or maybe you're using Microsoft Edge. But for the most part, I think a lot of people use Google Chrome. So here are some things that you might want to try in Google Chrome. You're going to find links to the things that I talk about in this episode and here in this recommendations area out at chrisnessy.com slash 211. That's where all the show notes are. First up, let's talk about tab groups. This is a way to group your tabs in Google Chrome. Now, this is different from pinning tabs, which you might be familiar with, but grouping them, this is something different. Now, to do this, you simply have to right click on a tab and add the tab to a new group. 
and you can give the group a name, you can assign it a color, and you can add tabs to a group from tabs that are open. Now, the one rub with this right now is that tab groups don't save automatically. So unless you do the following, you're going to lose it if you try it and don't do what I'm about to tell you. So pay attention. To save your tab groups, you're going to go into the search bar and you're going to enter the following web address. Chrome, semicolon, slash, slash, flags, F-L-A-G-S. And you're going to be brought to the super secret Chrome menu for settings. You're going to search groups. Then you're going to select tab group and you're going to enable the save button. So for tab group save, you're going to select enable. Then simply relaunch Chrome so the settings take effect. And then you'll see a little option where your previously created tab group or groups will be. And then you right click on it and just hit the toggle to save the group. If you have any questions, reach out. Be happy to help you out with that. Maybe I'll put out a TikTok or something on Instagram or a quick YouTube short to show you how to do this. I should probably start to do that kind of thing. Next, live captions inside of Chrome. Now, you might already be familiar with live captions on YouTube videos, but this little Chrome setting is going to enable captions on any web page where you're watching audio or video content in the Chrome browser. To enable captions, you're going to go to Menu, Settings, then Accessibility, and you're going to toggle on Live Captions. Now, just so you know, this is currently only available in English. But then go to a web page and play some audio or play some video, and you will see captions on the bottom of the web page. And the third Chrome recommendation I have for you today is how to search your open tabs. Do you have a lot of tabs open? Hello, AJ. And most teachers I know when I look at their computers, they've got 20, 30 tabs open. You can barely see the favicon and there's a lot going on in people's Chrome browsers. So here's what you do. Got a lot of tabs open. Don't want to have to hunt around for something that's open and you're not sure if it's open. Here's what you do. In the upper right-hand corner, to the left of the minimize button, you're going to click the down arrow. And then you'll see a list of all the tabs that are open. Now, you might get lucky and see what you're looking for, and you can click on it, and it'll go to that tab. Or at the top, you can type in a keyword, and you can search all your tabs for the tab you're looking for. If you think something is open, that should be, and then you can navigate to that tab. All right, so there's three Chrome tips for you, tab groups, live captions, and how to search your open tabs. Do you have other Chrome tips that you'd like to recommend? I would love to hear them. Go to chrisnessy.com slash 211, leave a comment, or send a voicemail. Go to chrisnessy.com slash voicemail and share your tip in an upcoming episode. Or if you send it to me, I will share it in an upcoming episode. That's it for the EdTech Recommendations. I was recently listening to an episode of Simon Sinek's podcast, A Bit of Optimism. His recent guest was Francesca Hoagie. She is a love and life coach. As a love coach, she teaches single people how to transcend their romantic challenges and find true love. As a life coach, she teaches rebels and seekers to truly love their lives. Now, you might be thinking, what does a love and life coach have to do with education technology? Or you might be thinking, is everything okay with your marriage, Chris? Stick with me. And everything is fine with Caitlin and me. So within this episode and within this conversation of a bit of optimism, I learned, and again, it's a long time since I've done this, dating, well, I've kind of already known this, dating is an experiment. What's the correlation? Education technology is also very much an experiment. Dating has been revolutionized by technology. Guess what? Education is currently still being revolutionized by technology. Better dates will lead to better relationships. What's the correlation? Trying more technology and finding what works for you and your students will lead 
to better technology integration. There's also no such thing as a bad date. There's also, well, yeah, I'm going to go with this. There's no such thing as bad tech. What's your approach? Approach all your tech with the best intentions and you will grow and grow you will when you use technology. Your students will grow each time they work with technology. You will learn what tools don't meet your needs and you will develop a healthy technology integration mindset. During Simon and Francesca's conversation, she talked about how to be a better dater and how to go on better dates. Now, to summarize, you should be learning something every time you go on a date about yourself, about the type of people you're looking for, etc. And take what you learn and use that every time you go on a date. How does that relate to education technology? I've been telling you since 2014, using technology isn't difficult, just give it a try. And the more things you try, and the more activities you design, and the more experiments you conduct, lessons, projects, activities, you're going to feel more comfortable each time you do that. And your students will get more comfortable being exposed to different technologies. But really the important thing here, and this has been the primary focus of this show, is to help you do better and do more with technology. I haven't been teaching the same students since 2014. So the integration strategies that I use and the ways that I use technology now, as I record this in 2022, is different than how I would have approached it in 2014 or 2015, 2016, etc. We evolve over time. We learn what we like, what we don't like. There are tools that I no longer use that I used to love. And there are always new tools that I'm always willing to give a little attention to and to try out. I think that's healthy because like in a relationship and you and I, we are in a relationship with education technology. We want to have a positive, healthy relationship with education technology. So how do we do that? You've got to be willing to try. And what you don't like about one tool, you might find you don't look at certain tools that way. Okay. You might say, you know what? I love some of the things that I can do in Pear Deck. And you're like, oh, cool. But there's also these features in Nearpod. And you might decide you like one over the other. That's fine. But unlike dating, it's okay to use both. <laughs> right? Let's, let's be honest. There, there can be a lot of crossover. And I'll try to stay away from some innuendo. But... <laughs> It's okay to use multiple tools. And, you know, we talk about app smashing all the time at ed camps and different conferences. Well, we try to put together this whole metaphor between, you know, how we, how we date and what our love lives can be, and we compare that to education technology, we've got a lot more flexibility with the technology, okay? If, I, if I'm using, you know, Pear Deck, Nearpod isn't going to, you know, come and knock on the door and, you know get mad at me and, you know, break up with me because I'm, you know, two-timing on it. Anyway, this might seem odd and it might seem, well, I hope it doesn't seem disjointed because as soon as I heard this episode from Simon and Francesca, I was like, instantly my mind went to, this is what teachers need to feel comfortable doing. And that is like dating. Sometimes you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And if you try to do things that are not who you are, and you're trying to integrate technology in a way that you can kind of keep up with, but you find to be really challenging, and you're immediately trying to do things just because you see them on Pinterest or TikTok or YouTube or Twitter, because you see somebody else doing it, and you think, oh, that's got to be the way to do it. You're not going to be able to keep that up for very long. So you've got to stay authentic and true to who you are. And it's okay to look around at different tools. You have to. How else are you going to have a healthy mindset when it comes to using technology in your school, in your classroom? The success you have with EdTech is inside of you, but you have to get to know the different tools, the different sites, the different models that are out there. So 
you've got to be willing to put yourself out there and try these things. And that's okay because, again, this is all an experiment. You do what works for you. You find the things you like and the things that you don't like, don't use them. All right? Not every tool is for everybody. And that's okay. What are your thoughts on technology integration? What is your approach? I do a lot of the talking. I have guests. But what, what do you really think about technology integration? What are your fears? What have been your greatest successes? What do you look for in the ideal tool? What tools are you out of favor with? What tools failed you? What tools are your go-to that you're in these long-term committed relationships with? And what tools have you dumped? Let's talk about that. Send me a little feedback, chrisnessy.com slash feedback or slash voicemail. This is a conversation I want to keep going with. So I'm going to rely on you to share with me. Maybe you should be a guest. Maybe your voicemail sparks me to say a little bit more, but that's up to you. I extend the invitation and I hope to hear from you soon. It's now time for the House of EdTech VIP, and I want to shout out two new connections I have on Twitter. First, shout out to Nikki Presley. She is at Nikki Presley16 on Twitter. I'll have a link in the show notes, which are a tap or a swipe away in your app, or go to chrisnessy.com slash 211. And I also want to shout out Jonathan Ayer, who is on Twitter. He is at Jayer 18, that's J A Y E R 1 8. Two new connections on Twitter. You should also connect with them because now they're connected to the House of Ed Tech, and that makes them House of Ed Tech VIPs. Thanks again for listening to this episode of the House of Ed Tech podcast. If you're not subscribed or following, I hope you'll continue to make this podcast a part of your anytime, anywhere professional development. I want to keep the conversation going, whether it's about Google Chrome tips or your thoughts on technology integration and the relationship we have with technology. Go out to chrisnessy.com slash 211. That's where you'll find the show notes for this specific episode would love to get a voicemail or an email, go to chrisnessy.com slash feedback or preferably chrisnessy.com slash voicemail and let me know your thoughts on what I talked about today. If you enjoy the House of EdTech podcast, do me a favor. Tell somebody else about the show. Share it on Twitter, Instagram, email people, the episode in your department or your grade level. Word of mouth is the best way to share a podcast that you enjoy. And I would appreciate it if you shared this one. You can also become an awesome supporter. If you get value from the House of EdTech podcast and you want to give some value back, you can become an awesome supporter. I am very thankful for the ongoing support from the following people. I want to give shout outs to Catherine Abdallah, Brian Carpenter, Aaron Cummings, Dan Gallagher, Peggy George, Jeff Herb, Mike Messner, Matt Miller, Patty Reefus, Lori Simpson, and Kyle Wilcox. I also want to take a moment and give a special thank you and shout out to JP Presavento. JP was a longtime supporter of the podcast for the last few years, and JP is an invaluable member of the House of Ed Tech community. And JP, I just want to thank you for your support of the show for the, as long as you have been supporting the podcast. I really appreciate it. Now, if you are getting value from the podcast, go to chrisnessy.com slash awesome. And all the information is there on how you can give back. The next episode of the show is going to be episode 212. And that's going to come your way on November 6th, 2022. Before I say goodbye, want to give a big shout out and welcome to 
Mike Brilla, host of the Inspired Teacher Podcast, new show on the network. Go to edupodcastnetwork.com to check it out and show Mike some support. Until next time, thank you for learning with me. And remember, using technology isn't difficult. Just give it a try. Thank you.